Evan Chikor recommitted a shocking and tragic series of events in July 2021. He went on a rampage, killing three people, including his own father, with a stone and an axe. He also injured and terrorized several others before he was apprehended by the villagers. But what was his motive for such a violent attack? The background is, Ivan was not well since 2004. He had received treatment for mental illness since a very young age, and his father would accompany him for medical treatment. He suffered from schizophrenia and would experience visual and auditory hallucinations. Schizophrenia is a serious mental disorder that disrupts how the brain works, interfering with thoughts, memory, senses, and behaviors. Schizophrenia involves a psychosis, a type of mental illness in which a person cannot tell the difference from what is real and what is imagined. Years later, the father believed that his son's condition was spiritual and took him for treatment at a white garment church where a prophet assisted them. He told them that he had been fully healed and it was at this stage that they decided to stop taking prescribed medication. On the morning of July 21, 2021, Ivan Chikore, who was staying in Luwane village in Kadoma together with his wife, decided to visit his father's homestead in the same village. When he arrived at his father's homestead, he demanded money to buy beer. His father, who was 74 years old, told him that he had no money. Chikore became enraged and picked up a stone. He struck his father several times on the head, causing severe injuries. Chikore then set four grass-thatched huts on fire, destroying the property and belongings of his father and other relatives. He realized that his father was still alive and attacked him again with an axe and hacked him to death with several blows. Chikore was not satisfied. He took the axe and proceeded to the next homestead where Tiaz Matara, a 32-year-old woman, lived with her husband and children. Her husband was away at work and she was alone with her two sons, a 12-year-old and a 4-year-old. He demanded money for beer from her. She handed him 30 bond and he took that offer as an insult. It was too little. She insisted that she had no money, but he did not believe her. He forced his way into the hut and attacked her with the axe. He hit her on the head and chest, causing fatal injuries. Chikore then set her hut and her car on fire. He also injured her 12-year-old son who managed to escape and ran to the nearby school for help. The 4-year-old son hid under the bed and survived. But Chikore was not done yet. He went to the third homestead where he found a 10-year-old boy, Tafadwa Moyo, alone. His parents and siblings had fled when they heard the commotion. Chikore attacked the boy with an axe and killed him. Chikore then headed to a fourth homestead, but the villagers had been alerted by screams and smoke. They armed themselves with sticks and stones and confronted him. They managed to overpower him and tie him up and call the police, who arrived and arrested him. After his rampage, three people had lost their lives and one boy was injured. Two homesteads had been set on fire. Chikore was taken to court where he faced three counts of murder and two counts of malicious damage to property. He was examined by two doctors who confirmed that he was indeed mentally unstable and was diagnosed with schizophrenia psychosis. An affidavit by Christopher Njanjeni, one of the doctors, recorded that he had examined him on the 18th of January 2023 and concluded that he had recovered from taking mental illness tablets and he could stand trial. In his opinion, at the time of the commission of the crime, he had been mentally challenged and he recommended that he be released in the custody of his relative, Justice Chikori. After considering the clinical evidence and the statement of agreed facts, the court was satisfied that the accused was incapable of formulating an intention to commit murder. A special verdict was entered in line with the provisions of S29 of the Mental Health Act. He was found not guilty by reason of insanity. Both legal teams wanted him to be released since he had recovered from taking pills. But his mother denied that the accused had mental problems. She did not want him back at the village. 
even at her own homestead she said that she could not control him and she was still grieving her husband who he had killed besides that she also said the community was already up in arms against her and her family she believed that to have the accused back in the community could lead to violence no one wanted him back and that he should remain in custody as if this was not enough justice she called the relative was summoned to court he was clear he accused even of being a drug addict he said that he drank alcoholic drinks commonly called cambra and smoked marijuana every time he had no money to access this he would be violent and commit offenses justice also said that he had committed several offenses and was on the police wanted list and he also said he cannot take him the court should deal with him having gathered this information the judge realized that even was a high risk person to be unleashed into the unsuspecting society in this event that he relapses he is a danger to society since there was no one in his family willing to take him back it will be irresponsible for the court to release him to nowhere whether drug induced or not his mental health condition needed monitoring the judge then gave his verdict he said that the accused is now mentally stable but the stability was drug induced and it required adherence to prescribed medication the accused's history shows that he had defaulted before releasing him back in society would be putting society at risk accordingly he committed him to chikurubi psychiatric unit for further management in terms of the mental health act the crime by Ivan Chikore was horrific and senseless. It left three people dead and many others traumatized. It also raised questions about the spiritualization of mental illness and the trust people give to prophets to leave medication. It highlighted the need for more awareness and support for mental health issues, especially in rural communities where access to services and resources may be limited.